It is exactly 9.30, which is when Jesse said he'd be here. That's punctual. Mr. Punctuality himself. Uh, see that time right there? What time I say I'd be here? <laughs> so yesterday was my birthday and Jesse brought me a gift, but not just any gift. To most of you guys, you're like, oh, a big wad of metal. This is a beautiful vice that is not cheap and it's a heck of a gift. This is gonna help me build many a cool thing. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. I didn't think of that. I really, really messed something up. <sighs> oh my gosh. So in the process of cutting this, it was very difficult to gauge where to cut it. So I kind of left myself about six inches, right? Well, I should have left myself six inches and one foot because I cut out the body mount that also supports the fuel tank. So now that made me a lot more work, a lot more unnecessary work because I cut it in the wrong place. Measure twice, cut once. Welcome to the third installment of this spine headache. Today, Jesse and I are going to try to push this 6,000 pound camper into my garage and take the Sun Raider back off of the Toyota truck. Now, it's heavy, it's awkward, and it's gonna be very difficult to jig it to my lift so I could pick it up. So today's whole process is basically trying to get the Sun Raider back off of it and finding out how it's even adhered. Because as of now, I don't know exactly how Sun Raider put these things together. I'm hoping it's like a nice clean nut and bolt situation and it'll come off nice. But that's to find out here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and try to push this monster into the garage and get it jigged up. That's today's chore, job, headache. I don't know what you want to call it, thing. So we're getting ready to pull this thing apart and we pulled back some of the material and I was appalled at how horribly these things are joined together. I was really expecting nuts, bolts, you know, nice fitted metal, not plumber's putty. These things are put together disgustingly. They hacked the truck in half, hacked. They have particle board, plywood to screw into. Most of the screws aren't even put in tight. And there are some sharp edges that could literally damage you if you were walking past it and caught your leg on it. I think anything I do will be better than this. Almost glue it together would be better. It's that bad, it's really that bad. Let's take a look. Look at this, they got like a piece of like, is that the roof? Oh wait, they got one screw going the other way. They have one screw going this way, two going this way. They have one big Phillips. We have a piece of roof, another big Phillips. This is like some weird silicone. We have some shag carpet. More shag carpet, up oh, some plumber putty. We have a disgusting cut, no paint, no paint at all. Just ready to rot, more plumber's putty. Some screws, I guess they figured they didn't need to tighten. Some more sharp metal edges. Look at this, the body's main support cut right off. Look, there's like a notch here where they got a screw half in behind it. I mean, it's really actually a piece of crap. The way this is put together is so bad. It literally changes how I have to take it apart. So, now you know as much as I do. So let's push this thing in a garage and, and see what happens because it's coming apart either with Tannerite, a Sawzall, a grinder, maybe some screws and a whole lot of tools flying. All right, push crew, you know what we have to do. We have to push this, don't we? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. At least it's not uphill both ways. Well, no, first it's downhill towards a whole bunch of expensive cars. None of those look too expensive and it has no brakes. Okay. And then it's uphill from there. Uh, yeah. Sounds easy. So it's only what, 6,000 pounds? Yeah, just shot 5,800. 5,800? 5, 5, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's easy. Or 6,800. No big deal. We'll figure it out. Yeah, you got this. I have an idea. Instead of pushing this pile, why don't we just ride the starter, put it in gear, which is stuck in gear, actually, clutch don't work, and just crank, 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 crank. With a four-speed transmission and a 307 rear end gear, this thing is going to be going like 20 miles an hour on the starter. If it works. I don't know if the engine seized. Or if the starter works. Oh, it's yellow. All right. We'll just hook up the power to this clearly marked red wire that goes directly to the block. That's not good. But the, oh, okay, at least that's painted red. I bet you, I bet you at some point in this truck's life, someone tried to hook this battery up backwards. Ooh. 
being able to abuse a battery, definitely make sure it's someone else's. Okay, that's the ground. Don't get fooled by the red ground wire. Okay, positive. Okay, no fire. Negative. Okay, let's see if my uh, 38 year old starter will move this train. It's stuck in gear, the clutches don't work, um, but I think obviously if I just let off the starter, it will stop, right? And here we go. Okay, hold on. Battery issues. Give it a second. Okay, let's try that. Getting irritated with the starter battery. Take 10 here. Hey! <laughs> That's second gear. Oh. You gotta, I'm gonna have to push the door up a little bit. Well, we'll probably have to cut this bumper off to get it all the way in, but let's get it mostly in. And that is why Denso starters are the best. Well, thanks to the hard work of the starter, it's in the garage, so we didn't need to push crew. Sorry, Jesse. So now we have to cut the back bumper off so we can get it flat up against the wall and then shimmy it around the jack. And then once it's lined up, then we gotta figure out how to get it on the lift. So the first tools you're gonna need for this project, after seeing how it was put together, Sawzall or- Reciprocating. Can't say that word. And your angle grinder. Vroom vroom spinny thing. Disc of death. <laughs> Spinny disc of death. And um, start cutting. First order of business, get this bumper off. We need to get this thing like probably right here because I still have to get to the toolbox and get all my tools out. Yeah, this is proving to be s difficult and strange already. Woo, yeah. Uh, thicker than I thought. All right, I don't know what you say for cutting metal, but timber. That was ballsy. We have progress. We removed the bumper. We did a thing. Now we have to see if it fits in the door shuts. All right, we've got a car lifty thingy and we're going to lift the vehicle. Come on, car lifty thing. Let's slide this baby around. Okay, now we just gotta pull it. There we go. Yeah, I got about four inches of up and down. You gotta remember, this is gonna go up and down. So if you put on a lift wrong and then lift it, you'll end up taking a cabinet off the wall. How's that look? Gotta be pretty square, but it ain't too good. Bugger, 
how come you always take that stance when you eyeball something? You know, like you lean back and. I mean, it's fine. We'll just bring Alexis to it anyway. Oh, all right. Now let's see how to pick it up, huh? Mm -hmm. So after some fine adjustments of moving the camper around, Jesse and I figured out how to get it on the lift, which is gonna include some blocks of wood, some screws, some luck, and working against gravity. Plan is to pull out this little water cap, which is where you used to be able to fill it for water, which kind of does work. Looks like the thing at the bank. And then on the other side, it's already got a hole. So we're gonna basically crib it with some wood and make blocks sticking out of the side of the camper body to be able to grab it with the automotive lift and then block the front and do the same thing. That should safely get it up and down and we'll be able to hear the lift to the camper so it can't possibly fall off because once it's off, I really don't know which way the weight's gonna wanna go. So I have to make sure it's like part of the lift. This is an indication how this is gonna go. Well, it doesn't say not for lifting. I, above camper. On camper. Above head. Pipe stop. Pipe out more. Pipe dangling over cameraman. Oh my gosh. Everything in this garage is like a Tetris match. She's small, but Pipe and hold. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Uh, we come up with a much safer and better way to do this. We're gonna put this pipe clean through it, level the pipe so that the camper back is completely level, and then tack weld this pipe to the lift so it can't possibly move. And by doing that, we're making a square, solid lift point that can't change when it lifts. This is very floppy because there's no supports in it right now. They're actually framed kind of like a house. So this will be the safest way to pick this up straight without breaking it. We're gonna sandwich it. Sandwich. Sandwich. All right. You are gonna have to go up. 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 Up slots. Okay, oh, 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 too far. Downs. Right, down more. Oh, right there. Right there? Yeah. You like that? First time drilling? You're pushing against it? Yes. Ready? Yep. We are level. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, that looks like it will work or rip off. It's officially jigged to the lift, and with Jesse's help, we figured out a way better way to make this come up and down safely and actually still be able to pivot. We got the back on a pipe and the front, obviously, on that platform you just seen us make. So now it picks it up like straight, but if we need to lift the front up a little more or less, we can actually pivot. So good call, Jesse. We can put the piece of wood across it too. If we had to, yeah. Okay, we're touching and we're about to be touching. So probably let's throw that two by four in there. Okay, we're almost there. One two by four. Careful, cameraman, don't get dirty. Look at this. I'm supposed to be the cameraman, and why are my hands dirty? Hey, we have contact. 
Oh, she's holding a lot of weight. It's actually picking up the front of the truck a little bit, so I know it's holding it well, because if it's lifting a truck with it, which is crazy that that hack job screw mess is holding it that tight. Well, you couldn't have planned that better. That little tiny door. Not bad. Yeah, so at least, at least we can get in and out of it. We got the side all unbolted here, straight down, all those nasty screws out. Now we're unscrewing the top, and they have these pieces of wood sandwiching this steel here, and everything is just so poorly done. The smartest thing they did was they flipped this lip up so water couldn't come in, so that's, that's a, at least that's a good idea. But they sure weren't kind to the, uh, the truck. This is all this haggard, rotted cut. And this isn't a very thick truck. See how small it is. Yeah, God, it's disgusting. Anyone who has one of these cut through campers like this, this is what it looks like underneath that shag carpet, man. It's not pretty. Screws, screws. So I'm pulling out all these upper screws here and I just keep finding more and more hack work. This is a hideous, Hideous design. Jeez. Look at that. It doesn't. Are you serious? They roll the sides in to keep it from leaking, but then the front, there's absolutely no lip at all. It's just wide open. Let's get the rest of this rat urine headliner down. almost all of them. That is some horrible craftsmanship. Now we're gonna take apart the floor. The floor looks interesting. So let's see what's going on there. I was gonna grind this bolt out, but decided not to because it's gonna shoot sparks everywhere. And I kind of actually, I'm gonna save this truck and I wanna put little sparks into the glass and I don't wanna light this on fire. So I decided to just take a hole saw and punch around it and just take a little core sample out of it and lift it right off that bolt stud. Since I'm obviously gotta fix the floor anyway, I don't mind putting a few more holes in it. Here we go. All right, we're through. Now on to the back. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was uneventful. Oh, heck yeah, man, they're coming out. So this back piece was built by a previous owner and he did a much better job than Sun Raider. We got off all the screws we could find and all the bolts we could find, but these things are so poorly adhered together that there's probably hidden crap where they found out they missed them after the fact. So we're gonna put a little pressure on it and see what happens. Well, it's picking a truck up. I 
don't think it's moving yet. Because <laughs> we're about to pick the truck off the ground. <sighs> this is so annoying. Like, where'd they hide all this garbage work that they did? Well, let's go inside it. Actually, it's trying to separate here. Help. Well, that's the fiberglass, don't separate that. Okay. But I don't know why it's still hanging on. Wait, there's a screw right here. Broken. Didn't take much, did it? What is in this corner? Nothing. There's nothing. This thing is that badly put together. But it's it's stuck. At this moment, I'm like, what am I doing? to get between this and the roof. Okay, gotten somewhere a little bit. moving. It's a lot of fiberglass sounds. It's still hanging on the back. It's doing something right here. Oh, it's peeling this chunk of floor out. Yeah, there's a step piece built into the floor. It's like a hidey hole. I don't know what it was for. Maybe you guys with Sun Raiders would know. It's like right when you first walk in, it's like a step. Looks like it was some sort of cabinet. Um, but I'm probably gonna put some equipment in there accessible from the outside. So that floor could probably go. Plus it's all rotted. What a sound. Huh. Okay, well, let's help that along a little bit. The old hole saw. Oh, that was rotted. Now I get the bolts out the back. It's getting there. Take the floor with you. Yeah, I gotta rip these out. They're holding up pretty hard. Oh, the floor feels like super floppy. I'm gonna sit here and screw the stupid things. Jesus. Oh, man. 
gonna be a lot of work. That didn't sound good. And I'm pretty sure it was the floor just ripping clean out of the bottom of this truck. Yeah, well, that was a noise. Some more noise. I don't know if I'm hurting it or helping it here. Oh, the fuel filler neck. Oh. I have to unhook the fuel filler neck. And if you look under there, you can see the floor bowing. Clearly, it's literally just plywood with a little bit of insulation sandwiched between it on three quarter by like two strips and some like steel flashing. These, these are not built like, like you think they're built. <laughs> Things are happening again. Jesus, that thing is heavier than it looks. Okay, it's much heavier than that. Go ahead and lower that roll. We got a problem. It's tilting because something is just railed in the back. I can't find it. Uh, but I better find it. Oh, I see it. Oh, you know, it sucks. I can't go backwards now. I don't want to go forward. So the fiberglass part of this camper is incredibly strong. It was literally hanging on back there by a little pipe that someone put in it. But it looks like it's about to come off, doesn't it? Yeah. It lifts all the way up and it didn't hit anything. Wow, that was, uh, that was hard and scary and hot and sweaty and dusty and dirty and loud. And it revealed a lot more work that's been done to the bottom of the camper shell. I mean, the thing is from 1984, so it's 39 years old to be expected, but it's definitely gonna pro prolong the process of making this one piece. Whew, boy, oh boy. All right, well, I guess uh, we're at this far. Ain't no stopping now. really just hack these things apart. I mean, there's nothing of quality here, nothing. The wells aren't good, the pipe choice is terrible, the, 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 the mounts that actually held the original bed are gone. The hack cut through here was, looked like they did it with a dull hatchet. The only thing of any impression to me was this goo they used, which was enough to keep it from, le no, it's like an umbrella rover, I guess it couldn't leak. The suspension's a horrific pile of crap added together. Wow. All right, that's bad. It's a piece of the truck. You know, the fiberglass shell itself and how it's built is actually really nice. The Sun Raider part is quite the quality. I'm gonna have to push this one.
excited. That's it. Here we are at the moment of connection. I finally got it in here and I'm super excited to see it kind of together to get the first view of what it's gonna look like. And so far it looks like it might fit and then on some other parts look like it don't fit at all. It's just a really cool thing to get to this point because I really have to this moment, no idea if it's actually going to work. This may end up in two different parts of a field. But here we are, so let's see what we got. All right, we just got done doing some measurements and it's looking like it's gonna fit. And it's looking like I don't have to extend the frame, which I'm really happy about because it's a lot of work. And it's looking like I'll have enough room in the interior to put the seats back. So everything's lining up pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and start trimming the body back until it fits. It's gonna be trim, 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 trim. This way we don't overshoot it. So let's cut a couple inches off this thing. Okay, we're three inches off of the door, which we can trust is good and straight. Truck's never been wrecked, which means it's gonna be eight inches off of my remainder of the cap. So let's go ahead and cut eight inches off it. Now, should I cut that an inch and bend it in? No, I'll just weld to it. I'm not gonna sit there and try to like save that little piece of tin. All right, so that's a three inch marker. Yeah. Well, that's one. Take a look. Yeah. Down, down, down. Nothing's hitting yet. It's not making those horrible sounds it made coming off. Okay, it's about to touch. There it goes. And we're getting closer to the roof. The roof here is rounded, and this I just cut square. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that on a little bit of an angle. Looks like about 38 degrees, and then that will let that come that extra little bit. But so far, it's looking pretty dang good. Yeah, and I definitely didn't have to cut that chunk off the fuel tank. Son of a gun. Right? Is that why I want to cut that? I want to cut all the way there? Yeah, why not? Why not? It's only metal. Come on, sit still. I am tired of cutting this truck. <sighs> Tired of 
tired of bending everything when it's dry. <laughs> ah! So many little pieces that cut off of it. Yes. I think we're doing pretty good. I think we're doing pretty good. I hate that slow cracking sound. This is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really cool. I can't wait to be sitting in that powerhouse flying on the highway and everyone sees that slow 1980s Sun Raider camper get on the highway and like, oh man, we stuck behind this guy. Not today. Pass you at 100. Right, so now that we have the camper butt hanging over the Lexus, I can immediately tell I have to trim a little bit more off the floor. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Of course, it's like the first time I cut it where it was like right above the fuel tank. So I gotta do that again. Fortunately, this time I know exactly where it is and I was able to lower the fuel lines. So I'm going to go whack this floor and um, retest fit. And for this cut, we're gonna use the corded angle grinder. I kinda of need a consistent RPM. Oh boy, I think I'll go from the other side and work in. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Jeez, ah. what a project. All right, that's cut out. Everything is so tight right now because I have to work in such a small space, but I got it. So I think I'm gonna end this video here. We got the Sun Raider off, we got the Lexus under it, and it's looking pretty good. So tomorrow I'm gonna start by making the body mounts and what I call the wings that are gonna fit the Sun Raider camper butt to the Lexus LX truck. It looks like it's gonna be very tricky. I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around what it looks like since it's basically right in the middle of the back door. So uh, yeah, that's tomorrow's problem. I'll see you guys then. She stopped, Captain. Hmm, hey, we have a problem. Oh, it hit the ground in the back. <laughs> Did Sun Raider's design save the propane tank? Okay, I gotta give him some credit. Didn't hit. Yeah. But it is stuck. Well, you know the obvious way to do this, right? Um, drive truck forward? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Reciprocate. Re what is it? Reciprocate. This is Sawzall. Sawzall. Or. You're supposed to say you've got a camera. It just. Oh. Right. So. Now that I have the um, coach, I don't like calling another coach, Jesse. I like camper butt. Jesse, I want you to know I'm literally putting this back because I forgot to film B-roll.